now. Now. Yeah. <laughs> just do this again. I'm sure. good at that. Starting yeah. now. Yeah. No, no, stop now. Stop now. Start now. Stop. Yeah. Go. My name is Dan Abrahams, uh, and I'd like to welcome you back. I'm not putting those errs on on purpose. <laughs> I'd like to welcome you back to the third episode, or whatever it is, I never know, of our podcast for everything Carve the Movie. As anyone listening to our previous two episodes may have easily realised, I was clearly making an attempt for a Guinness uh, Book World Record, a number of references to Carve the Movie and the word podcast in one recording. So... Um, I'm going to solemnly swear I'll do my uppermost to avoid such mind-numbing repetition again. Uh, so, in the first two episodes, I uh, gave a brief outline of the initial steps in looking for cast, crew and script uh, for the project and sort of getting your own independent film uh, off the floor, off the bedroom floor, or off your laptop or whatever. I am. Uh, so today I'll tidy up that part of the production a little bit uh, and before adventuring into some uncharted waters for uh, the episodes coming up after that. Um, I'm, I'm delighted to announce that from now on we will see greater involvement uh, and less common or garden knob twiddling from Bill Garnish, the engineer producer of these episodes and the man behind our particularly fine theme tune music which you heard a little earlier in this episode. So Billy, would you like to run the intro music again? Please, Maestro. No problem. Okay. So here we are then, uh, and having explained some basic points for the first stages of the project, I'll now ramble on uh, in, uh, how you can get information on actors and crew uh, from some professional websites, and then some advice on approaching people for the, the roles and expertise and so on and so forth that you need after you've finished writing your script. Uh, you know, basically the people who know what they're doing while you sit around spouting off a lot of old cobblers on a podcast. Uh, before that, I wanted to first of all try a quick idea game. This is now ground to a halt, by the way, but I want to introduce it to you, our beloved uh, uh, listeners. I was going to say readers then. <laughs> um, uh, it's an idea I had the other day, uh, and uh, it will see me return to the term carve the movie, because I'm such a liar. And it'll also uh, see the uh, uh, pronunciation of uh, the subhead, we'd call it in the newspaper, I don't know what, catch line. Strap line for Merry Bloody Christmas. Have a Merry Bloody Christmas, um, which runs along the posters and anything else, promotional stuff for the film. Uh, but what I was going to do, I was going to call the, 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 the segment Dan's Dialects or something ridiculously stupid like that. But due to my failure to explain this to Bill uh, <laughs> properly, we've ended up with something really random. So what the idea is, Bill will find five languages, write, write them down of the term have a Merry Bloody Christmas and carve the movie and then I have to pronounce that and then guess what the language is. But because I made such an arse of it, uh, we'll have to introduce it in another episode, so sorry about that. <laughs> I just realised that tapping noise is me moving my head, I think, and the speakers. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's got no hair, it's not keeping the speakers. <laughs> <laughs> the, the strange tapping noise is your bald <laughs> head. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> It's not really? the, there's nothing in it, so there's no noise coming from it. The rattling <laughs> noise from the previous podcast is Dan's head. And you heard it straight. <laughs> you heard it there, folks. Straight from our producer, the man that knows what's going on. <laughs> right, OK, so after the Mystery failure... Solved. <laughs> Mr Holmes. Uh, after uh, the failure to introduce the new segment at Dan's Dialects, I'll now talk to you about attracting... Um, as I casually drop the script paper on the floor, uh, talking about attracting cast and so on and so forth uh, from the internet and stuff like that. Um, I did most of this. I asked around people who, who work in amateur dramatics and so on and so forth, and they all pointed me towards a website called Mandy.com. 
I am just going to leave that there for anyone who's got a perverted mind like mine. As soon as I start saying to people, oh, yes, I'm looking at mandy.com, they give me a, a strange look and then leave me to it. But actually, it isn't some one-stop shop for a jazz magazine uh, subscription or anything like that. It is a one-stop shop for anything film and theatre. Uh, where you, uh, I've put down here on my notes, you look to find fellow professionals. But the last thing I would ever class myself as is professional at anything. So, professionals, not fellow ones. Uh, and I was going to move that. Right, so the first thing about Mandy.com is you can actually get away with subscribing to it and using the services for free. Sorry to the people that run the website, website and also make an <laughs> exorbitant amount of money out of other people's talent. But you can get away with just signing up, putting a picture up of yourself and talking about your project. Uh, the thing you do have to pay with is uh, your time and it takes up an inordinate amount of your time. You will have to go through, so if you're looking for uh, a lead actor uh, in a certain area, obviously you can't, because it's a project like this, you can't expect someone to come down from Scotland for a week for a shoot and for rehearsals and so on and so forth. So you obviously work out your area for your shoot, where you're from, to make legit, so it's not a logistical nightmare. Uh, and then just trawl through, if you can, they, they'll have their photos on there and CVs and stuff like that. Um, you also have to take into account that on a project like this, people are working for free. Um, so in many ways, you can't take the piss along from that front, but I have made one um, uh, uh, decision with that that the actors would need to be paid because I'm like a lot of people who may have a job as a oh, sorry, uh, uh, may have a job as a photographer and who may want to look over at being a cameraman and so on and so forth. Actors, as a rule of thumb, uh, work to live and so they need to get paid. They, they act that acting is their living. Um, so when I was pricing up a, and working out the the costing of the job, it's based on the fact that. The, 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 the cast would get a certain amount of money each day and, and for that, so that was automatically, automatically set aside. Uh, with things like your, your your crew, you can ask people if they want to uh, add another string to their bow, and, and when you discuss that with them on, on the email, initial email, um, that has come across, and I've had all sorts of people say, oh, it's fine, I'll look at it, I want to work on prosthetics, so I'll look at working on the project on that type of thing. Um, so that's fairly fairly painless. You just will have to spend hours. They do show reels on there and stuff like that, or you can ask people for show reels. But it does involve looking through, trying to find specific show reels that look for the sort of project that you're working on. I mean, I was very lucky with uh, the guy we've got as the lead actor now, Ramsey. He, he uh, has a particularly psychotic look <laughs> look about him, and his um, show reel had him looking particularly psychotic in in in, in a short piece, short film we'd worked on. So it was matter from heaven for me that the, the two things just clicked uh, as it was with the other guys as well so but it, i mean I, I think i spent probably two or three days just sat uh, over a period of time but just sat um uh, in front of the laptop just flicking through shows asking people not getting replies to emails and stuff like this so it, it can be a bit of a a bit of labor of love so you might not pay up front but you do pay with your, your time so uh, expect a few weekends to be taken up with uh, we're looking through for that type of stuff. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I looked through, picked out the uh, the people I was interested in, uh, prepared a, an email, um, and then I looked to to uh, uh, within a couple of emails, I suggest that um, we chat off the site because I don't. The other thing was I didn't really like the idea of putting a the script up onto the site in case you got picked up without people who didn't want to send it to and stuff like that. So, And then again, you, you're in control of your conversation, obviously. I know it sounds really stupid, but that's the sort of thing you need. Uh, so, um, and I've had I've had great results from, from there, so with the cast, and now um, and I've got a meeting later on this week with an assistant director, an art director, and all, all through all through that site, and it hasn't cost me a penny, which is, which is nice. <laughs> You're going to put in a link to that site, won't you? I can put it in, yeah, mandy.com, yeah, of course I can't, that's not a problem, I shall, I shall, so they don't come and chase after me and kick my door in, <laughs> the, the people from there. But yeah, I mean, it's a great site, and if you're a professional and you want to do professional work, you, obviously paying would help, and you can put, I mean, I, I didn't put anything up on it, just a horrible picture of myself, but if you want to put up showreels and stuff, presumably you have to start paying, but I wasn't getting into all that shenanigans. Oh, there's the toilet door shut. Right, so um, 
Then it was on to... Uh, issue... in, in our expensive studio. Yes. In our... toilet door. Is that what you're moaning about? Abbey Road. Yes. You know, so, sorry. Studio. I wasn't uh... moaning. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't a moan. I was just bringing the listener in ah, to the whole experience the, of Abbey Road. The, the ambiance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Abbey Road Studios with a toilet door slamming. That, 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 was, that was definitely wasn't the moment. I promise. <laughs> Don't cut me off there. Right. So then, with I, I got our sound guy Aaron um, West, who's going to be the first one for interviewing the next podcast. Um, going on meeting up with him on on Friday. So uh, that'd be interesting. Um, with Aaron, it was just a case of meeting face to face and seeing that he was the perfect fella for, for, for the role. Uh, um, our, our lighting guy, Matt Chidsey, was, uh, came about because of um, the post on uh, Facebook. A friend knew him and so on and so forth. He got in touch again at a meeting, had a good chat. I'd, I've had several meetings since then. And then that, uh, that went from strength to strength. So uh, I, I think a lot of it, once you do face to face, is, is really important. Um, then a guy again through Facebook, Ian Massa Harris, who is uh, going to was offering his talents as makeup designer. Um, he actually is the only one I haven't met face to face. But when you read, uh, uh, you know, emails and text messages from him and so on and so forth, it's just it's obvious, you know, that he's he's on board and and he's, and he's chock full of ideas and, and and passion for the project. Uh, and then from there, we had an, an absolute bonus because not only have we got Ian on, on board but he then um, has linked us in with a thing called Exelian Studios again I'll put the link uh, in the in the in the piece afterwards on the YouTube channel it's exelianstudios.com and they're providing uh, prosthetics consultancy which is just um, pretty mad um, so to think we've got all these things in 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 motion already and this is all just from some time spent on uh, online looking at this site and then meeting up with, with the actors um, I fitted that all in piece by piece but a great meeting with Ramsey uh, uh, and uh, Ramsey Dahani uh, who's playing uh, Tony oh, more about him in a second but uh, once we secured those these are major sort of building blocks so I was I was really chuffed about that um, and I, I know in the first sort of couple of podcasts I was talking about sort of notes that you you should make um, uh, uh, along the way to sort of guide points or whatever else to help people with other projects and the obvious one with this is like with anything it's going with your gut um once you meet sort of people and and and, and face to face it you can tell from their passion because you know in this area you're not going to get named actors you're not going to get sort of named lighting people and so on and so forth involved unless something desperate has happened to their career why would they want to become involved with a, a project of this size so once you catch up with people face to face and they're giving time out of their day to to, to meet you, um, you just know, you know that, that they're not bigging themselves up. The honesty from people is there and, and, and you, you can just tell and everybody so far from the project has been taken on on my gut, excuse me, I'm trying not to burp my mum's curry up, um, was taken on my on my gut instinct. And so with other people who I've met who I direct as I'm now directing it myself. But I met with guys who were going to potentially direct, and just it just didn't click at all. Uh, there was no sort of leeway, and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> once you go with your gut, I think that's the that's the best, the best, the best aspect of it. So keep that in mind all the time. You did consider not directing it yourself. Yeah, yeah. I met with a guy who um, this is really sort of a, a, a slight on a slight tangent, but because the film, it's, the script itself requires a lot of fear in in some of the. Um, the, the support cast or supporting cast um, I wanted to do a, 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 ideas that were a lot more visceral so actually almost sort of turning lights on and off and, and shocking the, the actors to try and because they're supposed to be a vessel actors that's the way I see it so getting them involved with the fear that's actually palpable in them um, rather than just saying right this is a frightened bit act frightened cue here goes the camera and he said, no, 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 we won't be, one of the guys, no, 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 we won't be doing any of that sort of thing. And I thought, well, you, 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 you're laying down the law straight away. It's a project where we're all getting involved. We're all adding pieces and ideas. I mean, you know, if I said to the actors, that's what I'm going to do, they're actors. If they don't want to do it, they won't, won't do it. But, I mean, people try different styles, you know. So I spoke to the, a couple of people and it, it was little, little things like that. No, we won't do that and we'll film it here and we'll do this. And I'll bring my friend along and I'll do this. No, it's, that's not how I saw it going. Not uh, the, I spoke to the guys 
as directors, I must say, after I'd spoken to and got Aaron on board and Ramsey and Matt and Ian, and all their view was that the way the script was put down, that I should direct it, even though I didn't know how to direct it. So mm. um, I could visualise it. We would all work together and use different skills and whatever to get the filming done and find, and say, well, that's why I'm meeting with the assistant director on Friday is that then I can say, well, look, that's my idea. Will that work? And then they can use their expertise. Yeah. But to meet with a director who is saying, no, we're not doing that, we'll be doing this. I know it's probably the standard way that films work, but this is only a small project. Mm. So I'm thinking, well, I don't really want to introduce eight people into a room where some little Hitlerian director's one man saying, you will do this, you will do that. No one's enjoying themselves. And then, you know, because people are giving their time up, it's supposed to be fun. You know, yeah. Although not terrifying, it's a terrifying <laughs> film. It's going to scare everybody. But you know what I mean. Even in a horror film, you can still have a laugh, surely, and enjoy it. Oh, and, yeah. and look back at it, and that so that bit gave me a little bit more um, impotence to 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 step up and say, yeah, I'm going to be the director. But it will be a a, a sort of a slightly back seat with it. I'll just talk about visualising, we'll storyboard it, and so on and so forth, and then they'll have to step up to the plate and say, well, that shot won't work, and Matt, I can't get the lighting on that, you know, that's not going to be where we are, and stuff like that. But I had done that, yeah, initially, yeah, because yeah. I didn't think of myself as a as a director, and it, it could all go fucking horribly wrong, where they throw me out. Editing is such a massive tool nowadays. <laughs> and I'm a massive the, tool the, as well. There's you know, so. so many massive tools involved. Edit, editing... <laughs> Editing this massive tool out of the whole project could be the way forward for Carve the movie. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, yeah, they're all aspects of, of you know. I mean, it, were you write your, your music? Would you, if you were doing a massive, a, a, a full-on album, would you think, well, I'm just going to get and run the studio myself? You, you'd want to work with, or expect to work with a producer. But once they came in, you think actually I'm better than you, or I'm happy with what I'm doing. You know? Yeah. So it is. I, do, I, am, I am a proper control freak with my yeah. music, so I yeah. know it's a but, right. version of I yeah. am like, that's how I want it to sound. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, from, from my perspective, I, I wasn't. But then when you see something like that happening, you think, yeah, I don't know. And it wasn't as if... The the impression I got was that this won't be for the benefit of the project, that mm. you'll be handing this over and then walking away. This will be to the detriment of it and yeah. and to the people who've got on board and so on and so forth. So I thought, right, you know. People the, people that are involved want to work with you anyway, don't they? And yeah. I think they would accept that, that you are the director, I think, yeah. without any problem. Yeah, well, they've, basically, they pointed me towards mm. it, uh, having read the scripts. There's a lot of sort of instructions within the script and whatever, and they said, well, you you obviously got a good idea and vision for it well we'll all push towards that and then yeah. that in my I like the collective idea anyway I think that's everyone's learning then aren't they and, and whatever and it, it gives you a bit more justification for giving up your time for free in some cases yeah. you know so but yeah so yeah that was that that was the start of that so yeah I booted them out told them <laughs> <laughs> do one do one yeah. do one your mark and, and, here, and here we are yeah. <laughs> listing around lost in the ocean of <laughs> independent films right um, yeah so when I uh, in, oh god that's me banging that's not the headphones me banging when I um, during the phase you were, I think it's, it's that I keep a complete open mind with anything because you you when you when you meet through, like when I met Aaron, he already had his ideas on on sort of the inner workings of the films and lead characters, and was oh is it like this? Is he like this? Is he like that? And you think oh, I never thought about that, but that then will transpose itself into the shoot itself or production notes or anything else. So it's just I think there always when if you go and meet the people, if you decide that you think right oh, that's the he, he's the right person for that role or he's the right person for that job or whatever else. He's then just start listening constantly because they will all come up with little gems that you never... Yeah, and little things like there's an opening shot. It really is a bit of a... Um, a not a, a showstopper, but it is a, it, if, if it can be worked, it's a great opening shot. And the first thing that Matt picked up on the lightning was this shot and he's been racking his brains of the best way to get since then and since oh yeah that's pretty and immediately you think, wow, the enthusiasm there is fantastic so he's sitting at home when he gets a minute working his brain around this shot and that's what you want you need that but you need to listen all the time listen to what people are doing you know so and what they're bringing to the table which is yeah another side of it and then just yeah so we've got ramsey then met with ramsey dahani um and to be honest just his his eyes are mad and um 
it just, they just sold with me. And then when we did a little bit of rehearsals, we filmed a little bit of rehearsals with Aaron was there. And the first thing from behind the, the camera is, as I was, we were doing a read through, um, a Ramsey one side of the table, myself the other side of the table, and Aaron filming was they sort of whispered over, his fucking eyes are terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, yeah, that's what we want. So it all, all clicked in. Um, there's a, one of the supporting actors, uh, Ian R. Cusk, um, is a brawl, currently the brawl, he's playing the role of Ian. Um, I, um, I won't go into too much about what he did, but basically he filmed a short sort of showreel for me upstairs while his parents are downstairs at a family party. <laughs> and he just went, hang on a minute, ran upstairs, filmed this thing, this piece, sent it to me, then ran back downstairs and said, I, I can't really do another one because I'm at a family party, but I hope that works. And I thought, if you're mad enough to get up and go upstairs and do it basically, uh, you know, as a little stint there, then and there for me, or you know, skit, or whatever you call it, then and there for me, and send it and in the middle of a family party, you, you sort of strike me as the sort of person I'd want. Plus the fact it was very good. But I just thought, well, if you're going to do that, then, you know, that's excellent. And and so so he, he got on board. And then Keenan Lloyd uh, Adams, I met him, uh, he plays the role, role of character, uh, character of Stuart, sorry. Um, met him one evening and he already had lots of ideas about the character, the physique of the character, just from just from reading through and, and was uh, was looking at the depth the depth of his of his character within beyond the realms of the script, beyond it, it really looking at the dynamics and why the guy was there and what the guy had done to get himself involved in the, in the in the scenes and in the film and so on and so forth. And that, and that, and I know that will that will come across. But it was amazing when you see that, when you see someone who's, you know, and it is only a short film, but he's read so much more into it, and then he's offering numerous ideas, and then that will work brilliantly when they get together. You just know there'll be much more of a dynamic when they when they get together for rehearsals and then the actual shoot. So, yeah. Uh, as far as a female supporting uh, actor or actress, actor, actor. As Ollie Reed would have said, uh, I am in discussions with someone for that role, and there's interest, and in, I'm interested in in the skills and talent she's got. So, uh, but that post is to be filled. Um, and right, so then other aspects, other aspects of it for projects. So you need everything done. You don't just need people who can work a a camera or a boom or so on and so forth. You need uh, backup, so social media backup and so on and so forth. Uh, from that, a uh, guy, Luke Hale, who runs a company called Global Big Media, uh, he built our website uh, for gratis. Uh, he doesn't do that uh, for a lot of people, but did it for us as a project that he could, he could use to, to, for the start of his company. Uh, you can find them on globalbigmedia.com. Again, I'll put the address in the, in the notes uh, on the YouTube page. Um, and so we've got that full support and things that, uh, that can get updated as things go on. Uh, I then decided that um, it was worth having some sort of recording of the whole thing. Um, so why not have a sort of fly on the wall documentary? So I um, approached a friend of mine, Kath Brazier, who works in TV. She's jumped straight on board with that. Um, having read the script uh, while she was getting her hair done, <laughs> <laughs> um, the script's so short, obviously, the hair, hairdressing situation lasted longer. But, yeah, she, uh, I've worked with Kath for years, so we get on well anyway. Um, and automatically she's uh, now involved with the, uh, putting the podcast up and some visual links with the podcast and so on and so forth after Bill's fabulous skills. I have to say that. He's sitting two foot away from <laughs> me. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we've now got that type of the stuff coming up. Um, so I think just from an initial message out on Facebook uh, and then a trawl round uh, mandy.com uh, that's not in a bad not in a bad state is it you know I don't think and so yeah it's just looking at the circle of friends I don't know why you wouldn't look at that but that's where we and of course you young man you're you've you've come on board because you're a power crazed psychopathic musician who just... <laughs> no, no no flaky musician <laughs> That's all I am. I'm like, yes, Dan, I'll meet you then. Yeah. No, I won't. No, six days later. Yeah, that's Was it then? I can't remember what day. 13, 30th, oh. I'm a little bit, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not completely reliable, but I will get there in the end. But we've got here tonight, so that's, you know, yeah. that's the start. It's three times out of three, you know. When's so. your next podcast, do you think? I don't know. Uh, well, I'm interviewing uh, 
uh, Aaron on Friday, and then we've got to sit down and, and, and put it all together. So, what, I don't know. It's, you're, you're the governor. Is this, that the, is this the video? Interview? Yeah, then we'll, we'll link that in. So, that'll be our first podcast interview. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we'll have to work that out. Yeah, cool. Ourselves. So, I'm right. very, very, you know, um, beginner level when it comes to video editing with music, but I will have a go. We'll have a go, and Aaron will have a go. So, yeah. we might, or we might just like to slot it in. I just say, it, it, yeah, we'll, yeah, it's a suck it and see thing, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So, which, uh, but, but, uh, right, so just as a final bit then, um, I thought of a, this shows you how weird that, you know, weirdly you can become involved in projects and the things you end up doing. So, um, I know I said in the previous podcast you have to be involved in every aspect, especially at the beginning. Well, we needed some sort of promo image, <coughs> um, which has now been turned into the incredible posters and images that you can see on the websites and the website carvethemovie.com and Facebook page and social media and so on and so forth of the blood dripping knife and all this stuff, which is uh, from Tim Jones, our graphics designer guy, who is just a genius. Um, but we needed an initial image. I needed to get something to show him. So I thought of uh, some Christmas decorations covered in blood, in snow, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the only problem was that when I decided that this was going to be an image that I could send to him, uh, Christmas had finished. All the Christmas decorations from uh, my house had gone back into the garage. I was going abroad with work, and uh, there was no snow outside in sunny Worthing. And uh, which is officially what it's called, Sunny Worthy. Now, yeah. Um, so uh, I was a bit scuppered, and I wasn't going to take Christmas decorations on a plane. So uh, off I went to uh, a particular place in 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 Europe, France. I'm going to say where it is. <laughs> it was in France. Are you allowed was, to say? Yeah. Well, oh. I, I'm now being chased by Interpol, but <laughs> um, <clears throat> and I was with a, a photographer who will remain nameless, Andy, you legend, and. Um, I was talking to him about where well, we were on the flight over saying, oh, you know, I, was, I did, couldn't get any decorations in the bag and so on and so forth, but I wanted some shots. And when I got to uh, the, the, the the area, uh, I was covering some, I, I cover sports as, a, as one of my jobs as a journalist. Uh, it was winter sports. And luckily, the local French people being sort of very relaxed as they are about most things in the world had left all their Christmas decorations up. <laughs> so I went and nicked some from a shop. <laughs> <laughs> outside the front, not in the shop, I must admit. This wasn't pure proper theft. So I nicked them off their Christmas tree decorations outside in the local village. We took the photos one after the other and I went and put them back the next night. <laughs> so they were the initial shots that we used. So basically minor theft, petty theft. <laughs> <laughs> damage to a man of opportunity absolutely yes. right absolutely right so yeah baubles a bauble bonanza in um in uh, brid le bain in france <laughs> i've now stopped now knackered myself oh, oh, I actually told the the set, the wanted posters yeah. will be <laughs> <laughs> clink clink there you go um so yeah uh note to self leave no stone unturned and also note to self don't fess up on radio that you're a, a thief um, yeah, so that, that's they're the sort of things I think you have to be prepared to get yourself into, really, the situations you have to get yourself into. Stealing Christmas baubles to make your film a success. <laughs> that could be a whole new podcast. Yeah. <laughs> things I've stolen. <laughs> things what I've stolen for this movie, Lark. <laughs> All right, well, I'll, yeah, that's me, that's, that's, that's me done, I think. I think, Governor. Oh. Five years, Norman Stanley Fletcher. Outro music. Outro music. Um, are you going to do the... Uh, oh, yeah. The carvedmovie.com. Yeah. Um, or are we just, are you just going to put them as links on... No, the... I'll put them as links purely yeah. because I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got them written down. <laughs> I've got them written down. <laughs> I'm so professional. That's right. Professional to the last. Um, this could be it. They could get could get me. This might be the last word you ever hear from me. So, if, if not... Uh, Clearly we haven't got this that you drive on with. <laughs> I'm going to be phoning them up. We've just ringed up the police station <laughs> yeah, yeah, now. I've got him. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos the Jekyll, he isn't, but anyway, you can have him. Bauble <laughs> stealer. So, yeah, so uh, au revoir, it could well be.